Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Inside, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, next week, the major event that's been long anticipated and discussed is actually happening. It's the Bricks Summit in Kazan, which is hosted and chaired by Russia and starts next week. It will be the 16th meeting of the heads of the state of the member countries and the first to be held in the new expanded format. Now, since the beginning of this year, five additional countries were admitted to the association, which now includes Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Egypt, Iran, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia and Ethiopia. Now, the meeting in the capital of the Republic of Tatarstan is going to be the most representative in the history of the association, with over 13 known Western countries participating. Now, the BRICS countries must now at the summit establish the new criteria for the future work of their association. Now, this is the most representative forum and this Kazan event has the potential to be the largest foreign policy event ever held in our country, said the Russian presidential Yuri Yushakov, who's heading the organising committee for the BRICS summit. Now, he stated that 32 countries will be represented at the forum, with 24 states re represented by their uh, leaders. One, 10 of the BRICS countries, 9 will be represented at the highest level, with only Saudi Arabia being uh, the one to send as foreign minister. Additionally, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the SCO Secretary General Zhang Ming, the Secretary Generals of the CIS, the East uh, Asia Europe, uh, Eurasian Union and the New Development Bank Dilma Rousseff will also be in attendance. Now the high level and large scale geographical representation at the Kazan summit demonstrates the significance and prominence of BRICS in the international arena as well as the growing interest in the association among countries pursuing an independent and autonomous foreign policy. Now, many countries see advantages in the BRICS, which forms the basis of the <coughs> West attitude to the uh, association, according to Yuri Yushko. It's not that so much that they're a failure of BRICS, but rather the BRICS is too highly attractive a proposition for a number of countries uh, around the world. And the West has traditionally maintained a close membership policy for its associations, with even the countries that economically and politically are now strong have been excluded from membership of the likes of the G7. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking all of you now for just watching because every viewer is important. Now this applies obviously to China and India. BRICS is much more a democratic association which offers absolutely equal mutually respectful interaction and cooperation, said Yushakov. Now responding to a question of why is the West reluctant to engage with the BRICS, I mean, Yushakov highlighted that a significant number of states are reluctant to embrace international relations that are shaped by the unilateral decisions of only a few countries. I think he really means the USA. Now, the Kazan summit will comprise of two parts. The first will be a meeting of the organization's member countries, which will address the theme of strengthening multilateralism for an equitable global development and security. The second will be a meeting in the BRICS plus outreach format, with the theme of BRICS and the Global South, building a better world together. Now, the primary objective of the forum is to facilitate a more seamless integration of the new member countries into the existing multi-level cooperation framework. Now, the Russian presidency has placed a significant emphasis on the implementation of the financial track within BRICS, Yushakov said. Now, the Russian Ministry of Finance, in collaboration with the Central Bank, is currently engaged in discussions with its partners within the association regarding the establishment of a pan-BRICS financial platform that's a specialised clearing infrastructure and a BRICS reinsurance company. Now, the launch of these activities and initiatives will facilitate the practice of settlements in national currencies and reduce the costs associated with mutual trade. Now, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, has 
uh, already uh, organised around 20 bilateral meetings at the summit. And as the head of state's aid, Lushakov said, participation in the association is one of the most important priorities of Russia's foreign policy. He also said that the member countries represent over 30% of the Earth's land mass, have 45% of the world's population and have over 40% of the global oil and gas production. Plus they have about 30% uh, of the world's trade in goods. Now by 2028, it's estimated that the GDP of the BRICS countries by purchasing power parity is going to be almost 40% of the global uh, total, while G7 will account for only 27%. I mean, that's according to the Russian presidential aide who says, we believe that the BRICS is a prototype of multipolarity, a structure that unites the global south and the east on the principles of sovereignty and mutual respect. Now there's a growing interest in, uh, from other countries in joining the BRICS. To date, 34 countries have indicated an interest in pursuing full-scale membership or at least collaboration in its various forms. I mean, according to Ishakov, the doors of BRICS are open to like-minded countries that share the main goals and principles of the association. However, there are different points of view regarding the new possible wave of BRICS expansion. He added that there's no unified approach within the association on that subject yet, but a number of states are confident that the expansion should be delayed, while others are in favour of accepting new members and have suspended suggested even specific countries to be included. But of course it's not a simple issue and of course the leader of the BRICS members uh, will make the deal with it at the summit, the president said. I mean Russia in particular advocates for the emergence of a category of partner state of the association. You know, that, well, that's understandable of course. I mean, according to uh, Ishakov, it would be much more convenient to include new members in this capacity so it would smoothly fit into all forms of cooperation within the BRICS framework. I mean, the Russian presidential aide highlighted that certain states have chosen to take part in the summit and are facing pressure from the West uh, for doing so. I mean, Serbia is facing a significant external pressure in the process of its cooperation with the EU. It's subject to constant conditioning by various actions and conditions. Now, the BRICS format is based on mutual respect and it doesn't impose conditions on any of its members. I mean, Shakov says no one at the summit is asking for a choice between the two options, BRICS or the EU. He stated that the Russian Federation is aware of the challenges that its Serbian ally is facing and we are confident that those in Belgrade will make a decision that meets the interests of the Serbian people. <clears throat> I mean, Russian President Vladimir Putin did extend an official invitation to his Serbian counterpart there and the Serbian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Vulin during a meeting in Vladivostok uh, did say that the Vukic had not uh, decided to decline the invitation, but he's not actually confirmed his presence as yet. Although time's running out, he's been lucky to find somewhere to stay if he doesn't get his, uh, a move on. So if he's not really going to attend, then he's going to send somebody else from the country. I mean, a year ago, a number of members of the Serbian parliament submitted uh, a bill for consideration regarding uh, Belgrade's accession to the BRICS. Plus the Serbian leader himself reported that he would be invited to the association of the summit in Kazan. So let's see. Now in a recent statement, the Deputy Prime Minister uh, Vulin highlighted the potential for BRICS uh, to serve as an alternative to pursuing the European Union membership for Serbia. So we'll see how that kind of develops. I mean, in light of the West growing emphasis on defining Serbia's foreign policy priorities, the prospect of rapprochement with Moscow appears to be at odds with the country's new stated plans for European integration. We'll see how that goes. Meanwhile, Turkey submitted an application for full participation in BRICS and President Recep Tagan uh, Erdogan will be in attendance at the summit, according to a report by the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rabakov. I mean, an interview with this Vestia, Alina Sibnetva, who's a research fellow at the Department of Near and Post-Soviet Politics, 
of the Russian Academy of Science. She said that Ankara is seeking to project a more prominent role on the global stage. I mean, the Turkish Republic is pursuing a strategy of becoming a supranational power, which requires it to engage with a range of blocs and platforms, not obviously just the EU and NATO. Plus, the analyst highlighted that Ankara currently doesn't receive any special benefits from the framework of its existing associations, like the EU uh, or the NATO. I mean, she also gave an example of NATO. Turkey's been excluded for a number of the potential op uh, opportunities there, including the F-35 service production programme. In the same situation is evident in the European Union, where Ankara is asked to do more than it gets in return, and is constantly accused of non-compliance with the Copenhagen criteria. So, she believes that the BRICS represents an important avenue for non-Western uh, development for Turkey, which is why participation in the summit and joining the alliance is actually pretty crucial for Turkey in its looking to the future. I mean, Turkey is drawn to the unification by the non-Western composition of the participants. Plus, China is a member of the alliance and Turkey is developing extensive macro corridors, including transport and economic ones, uh, from Europe over to China. And this is the organization's overacting political objective. It's open to developing relations with uh, India and other participants, including those in Africa. I mean, the association offers a novel approach to problem solving, both on a regional and global basis. So you can see why exactly they want to do it. I mean, the accession of disparate states to BRICS uh, is openly challenging the West's uh, dominance and it reinforces the inclusivity of BRICS and also its vast potential for solving problems. She believes that BRICS will become uh, an alternative source of decision making in the world. Plus, the BRICS must address the issue of establishing transcontinental communication in Africa. I mean, there are initiatives that facilitate economic growth in African and European countries. The Near East and the Middle East are now linked, with new opportunities emerging in the logistics sector and a rapidly growing market for goods and services. So there are sufficient raw materials, resources, labour and technology. Issues are solved through interaction, according to the analyst. So Amina highlighted that um, interaction in BRICS is conducted in accordance with straightforward and different rules from the multipolar uh, world, the unipolar world. There's no pressure on countries to comply with Western dictates and they can trade in national currency and as a result retain a large volume of their financial reserves. I mean, the development is gradual and countries are completely different so it would be unreasonable to expect this to be uh, implemented quickly but we shall see. The accession of a significant number of states demonstrates the potential success of this happening so we shall see. I mean, the collaboration between sovereign uh, entities that are willing to negotiate and uh, work together can only be welcomed in this moving uh, towards uh, the multipolar world. I mean, the countries that are subject to Western influence, like Argentina, who is initially expressed interest in joining BRICS, but uh, the new president withdrew from the process. So there's an indication that the West is exerting pressure on countries a number of countries limiting their potential for interaction with BRICS and that's for countries just lack the resources or political experience that are particularly vulnerable to this influence. Anyway, so I will be in, uh, in Kazan and I will bring you the latest of what's happening in a series of reports for the next, uh, next week. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobrexitside.com. Don't forget the comments button and I'll see you all again soon.